The Aztec people have flourished and their many territories are developed and secure. You must build up your navy, however, if you wish to discourage foreign powers from intruding on your land. First, exit this screen and select a citizen and tell him to build a dock by selecting the Build Dock button under Build Military Structures. Docks can be placed only on the coast. They cannot be placed on rivers and boats cannot travel on rivers. Place the dock somewhere on the coast nearby. Ready. Yes? Here. Good. Now select your dock and look at the action panel to see what you can build there. The top row shows the fighting ships you can build. The Carrick, the ship of the line, and the privateer. The Carrick is good at fighting the ship of the line, while the ship of the line is good against the privateer, and the privateer does well against the Carrick. Unlike land units, the combat relationships between sea units changes over time. So be sure to consult the Empire Earth Encyclopedia to see more about navies of other time periods. The second row of buttons shows the non-combat ships, the whaling ship, trading cog, and cargo ship. The whaling ship is used to harvest fish from the sea, the same way a citizen harvests food from a forage bush, while the trading cog can earn gold by trading with other docks, and the cargo ship can transport land units across water. Select the ships nearby and control right-click near the island that has been revealed on your mini-map. Attention on deck! Tow the line! Setting sail! Tow the Ships line. can be put in formations to maximize their effectiveness. The best formation for broadside firing ships such as these is the line formation. Attention on deck! Setting sail. Tow the line. You have encountered a fleet of pirate vessels. Destroy them. It is usually best to try to focus your fire on one target at a time. With your unit selected, you can hold down the shift key and right click fire on any will. units to queue up the units you wish to be attacked after the first target is destroyed. With the pirate's naval force wiped out, you can safely transport units to the nearby island to explore it. First, move your ships back and use the garrison action to put them in the dock to repair any damage they may have taken. Some new units have been created near the dock for your use as well. The cargo ship unit has no offensive capabilities, but can transport land units over water and unload them. Select the group of regulars standing near the dock and right-click on the cargo ship. The units will be tasked to perform the default action for this case, which is to embark onto the ship. Now select the Unload Transport action in the cargo ship's action menu and left-click on the island. Your transport will move there and unload the units garrisoned inside. Setting sail! Awaiting orders. Aye, Captain. What can I do? Very well. Here. 
Of course. Ready. Right away. Whenever you're ready, get moving! All hands on deck. Set Eliminate any sail. remaining pirates on the island. All hands on deck. Ahoy! Attention on deck! Ahoy! Aye, sir. All hands on deck. Aye, aye. Attention on deck! Ahoy! Awaiting orders. On course. Awaiting orders. Awaiting orders. With the pirate threat dealt with for now, we can turn our attention to our neighbors at the top of the map. Since we can't be sure of the Americans' intentions, we should improve our base defenses a little. Go to the warehouse that is being signaled on the mini-map and select the citizens standing near it. Under Build Military Structures, select Build Outpost and place it somewhere near the warehouse. Since this is an important resource collection center, the outpost will help defend it. What can I do? Move it. Here. What can I do? Very well. Of course. Very well. The outpost can attack enemies within its line of sight. Outposts are one of the few units in the game that can spot spies. Spies are invisible to all players except the owning player and can only be seen by outposts and other spies. When a spy is spotted, all of your other units can see him for a short time as well and will attack. Spies are always considered hostile targets, no matter which player they belong to. Let's build a spy of our own. Go to the area being signaled on your map and select the university. The university is where spies are trained and also where technology points can be gathered. We'll learn more about technology points in the last tutorial. For now, click the Build Spy button in the university's action panel.
Attention on the deck. spy has no attack capabilities, but he does have a set of special powers that make him very useful in infiltration and sabotage. Let's do a gather intelligence mission against the American player. Select the spy and choose the gather intelligence action from his action panel and left click on the city center that has just been revealed near the top of the map. I am your instrument. I am your instrument. Here. Well, it turns out the Americans had a second base we didn't know about. A successful gather intelligence mission carried out against a building reveals the location of all buildings of that type the player owns. It's useful in planning precision strikes or gauging the relative strength of another player. Since our spy didn't spot any enemy troops headed our way, let's see if we can trade with the Americans. A merchant ship has been created for you near your dock. Select it and then right-click on the United States player's dock in the top center of the screen. Select your merchant ship and look at the unit information panel. It shows you the money that will be generated for you when it reaches your dock. This is usually less than when it reaches another player's dock. Also notice the cargo it is carrying has a name. Cargo is randomly generated every time a merchant ship begins a new leg of the trade route. Some of the cargoes are more valuable than others. Other things that affect the value of a trade route include distance and number of trade units operating on the same route. Course, Captain. Coming about. Markets work the same way and can produce land trade units. Select your market and right-click on the United States Players Market, which is located near where his dock is. This will place a rally flag directly on that player's market. A rally flag tells the units produced from this building where to go when they are created. In the case of the market, this flag will tell the trade unit to immediately create a trade route with the targeted market. The other actions that can be performed at the market are direct buying and selling of resources. The gold resource is the exchange currency and it is used to purchase other resources. As you buy and sell resources, their worth in your empire fluctuates based on your transactions in accordance with the laws of supply and demand. The more you buy of a resource, the more it costs. The more you sell, the cheaper it becomes. Buttons with green arrows are for buying resources. Buttons with red arrows are for selling resources. The asking price in gold is listed on each button. Now, let's produce a trade cart to start a land trade with the Americans.
Note how the merchant immediately begins to make his way to the other player's market along the road. When he gets there, he'll have to go inside and wait for a short time to complete the trade. Like sea trade routes, the greater the distance between two markets, the greater the profits. With a close trading relationship forming with the United States, the Aztecs looked forward to a bright future with their new friends. Never again would foreign powers threaten their two countries' development and prosperity. Congratulations on finishing the third Empire Earth 2 tutorial.